Before the Anglo-Saxons, Britain was under the rule of the Roman Empire. Gaius Julius Caesar, during the Gallic campaigns in 55 and 54 BCE, invaded the island, but did not establish a strong Roman administration. Nevertheless, Roman interest in the island remained, and within approximately 120 years after Caesar, Britain was conquered by the Roman Empire. The local inhabitants, the Celts, were helpless against the ancient war machine. Despite occasional attempts to resist this formidable adversary, the inevitable happened and the Romans became the masters of the island. If you subscribe to the channel before the video, you will make me really happy. Now we can continue the video after the arrival of the Empire, Romans and Britain started living together on the island, leading to a blending of Roman and British cultures. Prior to the Romans, pagan culture prevailed in Britain. In fact, even after the Romans took control, pagan practices persisted for a considerable period. However, starting from the 4th century, as Rome began to adopt Christianity, it quickly influenced the people of the island. Christianity initially spread in the eastern provinces of Rome, then moved to Europe, reaching Britain over time with the influence of the Catholic Church and contributions from the Romans. By the mid-4th century, a significant portion of Britain's under Roman rule had converted to Christianity. The Romans brought not only Christianity, but also their engineering prowess to the island, constructing aqueducts, roads, aqueducts, and forts. This monumental development facilitated rapid progress in Britain. Additionally, these structures continued to stand and be used for centuries even after the Romans departed. Not only Britons, but also the later settlers, the Anglo-Saxons, knew how to utilize these structures. They recognized the advantages of walled cities and continued to capture and use such settlements. Another innovation brought by the Romans to the island was writing. When we glance at the modern era, one of the best recorded periods in British history is undoubtedly the time when the Romans ruled. They kept records in Latin, managing to preserve them. However, as everything comes to an end, so did the Roman rule in Britain. From the last quarter of the 4th century, the world entered a period of significant change. This change was marked by a massive upheaval that affected all of Europe. At the core of this upheaval was a migration movement. We're not talking about groups or communities of a few thousand people moving. Entire nations were on the move. Before the migration period, the borders of the Roman Empire along the Danube were, in fact, dynamic regions frequently subjected to attacks. However, by the end of the 4th century, these borders had almost lost their functionality. The crisis created by the migration wave was escalating, and the Roman Empire needed its troops in continental Europe, specifically in Italy. Consequently, the Romans began withdrawing from Britain, and Britain was now on the threshold of a new era. In the early 5th century AD, the Angles and Jutes in present-day Denmark, Saxons on the north shores of Germany, and Frisians on the coast of the Netherlands were living. These groups were already familiar with Britain. They had served as mercenaries in Roman armies and fought in various regions of the empire, including Britain. Therefore, various Anglo-Saxon groups had already begun coming to and settling in the island long before the Romans left. With the departure of the Romans, the Angles, Jutes, Saxons, and Frisians started migrating intensively to Britain. This migration occurred gradually, and the Anglo-Saxon population on the island gradually increased over time. The exact motivations behind the migration are uncertain. It likely involved various political, economic, and social reasons. In addition, according to the record of Gildas, a non-historian but proposing a different theory on the matter, the Anglo-Saxons were actually invited by someone. Around 410 AD, when the Romans withdrew from Britain, the few remaining Romans and their British allies in the region were dealing with attacks from the Pict and Scottish tribes in the north of the island. However, they did not have sufficient military power to stop this, so they needed external support. The most suitable candidates to provide this support were the Anglo-Saxons, 
who were already familiar with the island as mercenaries. The Britons agreed to give the Anglo-Saxons eastern lands and ensure the supply of food for all soldiers during the war. However, over time, things began to change, and the Anglo-Saxons started complaining that the promised food supply was insufficient. Small disturbances eventually led to conflicts and, ultimately, a prolonged war. Peace was eventually established, but by that point, the Anglo-Saxons had taken control of a significant portion of the region now known as England. Another source that discusses the arrival of the Anglo-Saxons is the work Ecclesiastical History of the English People by Bede, a prominent historian in medieval English history. According to Bede, the first leaders of the Anglo-Saxons were two German brothers named Hengist and Horsa. These leaders, along with their men, arrived at the Isle of Thanet and defeated the Britons there. However, the agreement between the Britons and the Anglo-Saxons was quite fragile and not entirely valid. Bortimer, within a few years, had attacked the Anglo-Saxons four times but had not achieved a decisive outcome in any of them. These records appear in various forms in early and Momo books on the history of England, as well as in Anglo-Saxon chronicles. Nevertheless, the historical accuracy of Hengist and Horsa is still a subject of debate today. Scholars have not reached a consensus on the number of Anglo-Saxon immigrants to Britain during this period. Henrik argues that the number is around 100,000 to 200,000. Brian Ward suggests that the number of immigrants is about 200,000, while Catherine thinks it is closer. Given this perspective, it is not easy to estimate the number of Anglo-Saxons coming to Britain. However, regardless of the numbers, by around 500, Anglo-Saxon communities were beginning to emerge in South and East Britain. As a result of the migrations, four major kingdoms emerged in the south and east of Britain, East Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria were under their rule. The Saxons, on the other hand, had established a powerful kingdom in the south known as the Kingdom of Wessex. In addition, there were three smaller kingdoms, Essex established by the Saxons and the Kingdom of Kent established by groups. So, how did all these events historically impact an individual or community? Before the invasion, Celtic was spoken in much of the island. The language spoken by the Anglo-Saxons was a West Germanic language, a mixture of Old Frisian and Old Saxon, and this language, now called Old English, was quite similar to German. In 1066, when the Normans from northern France invaded England, Old English underwent a significant structural change, and many French words were added to the language. Today's English has actually emerged as a mixture of all these languages. In addition to language, the Anglo-Saxons also changed other things. For example, they reintroduced pagan religion to Britain. We mentioned earlier that the Britons had adopted Christianity under Roman rule. After the departure of the empire, the Britons continued to adhere to this belief. However, the Anglo-Saxons were pagans, and with their arrival, pagan culture regained strength in the south and west of England. However, this change did not last very long. In 597, Pope Gregory I sent a missionary mission to England led by St. Augustine. Kent King Ethelbert, who met with this mission, became the first Anglo-Saxon king to accept Christianity. Over time, other Anglo-Saxon kings and war leaders followed Ethelbert. However, the conversion of the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity was not easy, and the process took place gradually. After the death of some Christian kings, pagan kings who embraced pagan beliefs could take their place. Additionally, some kings continued pagan practices while not neglecting certain Christian traditions. According to the historian Bede, in the 7th century, King Redwald of East Anglia had a temple that included both a Christian altar and idols of pagan deities. The adoption of Christianity by the Anglo-Saxons also brought about an innovation that strengthened the kingdoms. All of this contributed to the emergence of politically and economically stronger kingdoms in England. Thank you very much for watching the video until the end. If you like and subscribe to the video, you will make me very happy. Thank you again.